but today we will be covering learning how to filter lists and searches so I can find the books I like faster, tagging books to create my own lists, and making annotations with Libby's notes and highlights feature. So those are our three key features from our polling today. Of course, if you want to see any of these other options, you can always pop it in Q&A for our open discussion portion. Marissa will be using a demo library on her iPad. Uh, just we like to make sure we don't borrow any titles y'all are waiting for. So keep in mind, it won't look exactly the same in terms of content that your library has, but functionality, well, 100% the same. All right, Marissa, it looks like you're good to go. All right, thank you, Joe. All right, so these are some of my favorite tips and tricks, and I'll even try to sneak in. I see that there were there was some a lot of interest in a few of the other things as well. So I'll try to sneak in what I can. If I miss it, then go ahead and type that in the Q and A section, and you will be able to find it there. All right, so let's start with tip number one: searching for titles. So we want to figure out how to filter and refine our search results so that we can find the books we like faster. And it would really help if I brought my screen over in front of me and it wasn't next to me here. So give me one second, there we go. All right, so to start this search, I'm actually going to start up at the top of the screen next to this magnifying glass where it says search. I'm going to tap into here and then go over to more options. So, for this tip, I like to start um, my search with every single title in my library's digital collection to show you just how easy it is to filter from over 70,000 books down to a reasonable couple hundred. Um, but before I do that, I just want to sneak in this tip and trick of finding how to find read along titles. So in this menu where it says more options, you can come to format any and select read along books, and that will allow you to find those read along titles. So just a sneaky tip right there for whoever it was that asked to see that. This is where you can find those children's books that also have the narrator with them. But for this tip and trick, I'm actually going to leave both the title and author blank, and then I'm going to leave all of these categories as all, any, anything, and everything. And what that does is capture every single title in my library's digital collection. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap search without changing anything there. But again, if you want those read along titles, just change that format to read along titles and then tap search and you'll be able to find those. So in my advanced search, you can see I have 53,000 books and 23,000 audiobooks. So that's a hefty number. And um, I, I would be lying if I said I haven't spent an entire day looking for books when there's that many in a search, and I'm sure Joe has too. Um, but let's pretend that today we're busy, we have a lot to do, and we can't, we don't have time to just look at books all day long. I wish that was the case. So we're going to start refining our search up here in the top in this maroon section here. This is where a lot of people don't realize they can start fil filtering their search. So you'll see that this um, maroon box here is letting us know that we have how many number of books we have in each format. My demo collection has magazines. Unfortunately, yours does not. But you can always ask your library to add them. And then it tells us the subjects and genres that are included in this search as well. So what I like to do when I start my search is start choosing subjects or genres. And one tip I always tell everyone, whether they're new users or not, is that anything in Libby that's underlined is a button. So go ahead and tap anything that you see that has an underline there and see what it does. So here in particular, I'm going to tap more here. That gives us a full list of all of the subjects and genres that are included in this search. So let's go ahead and select mystery. You can even see the number of titles that fall into that category. So again, we're starting with over 70,000 titles. If I tap into mystery here, 
you'll see that number drop significantly. We are now just under 3,000 for each audiobook and ebooks. So we're already starting to filter that down. Now, what I love about choosing subjects and genres is that you can select more than one. So I'm currently looking for a mystery title, but I specifically maybe want a historical fiction mystery title. So I'm going to come down to historical fiction and I'm going to select that. And now you can see it went from almost 3,000 in each category to just over 300 books and 209 audiobooks. So we started at 70,000, we're now down to just over 500. And what I wanna point out and clarify here is that by choosing mystery and historical fiction, Libby is not showing me um, mystery titles and historical fiction titles. What Libby is doing right now is showing me mystery titles that are also historical fiction titles. So that's why I always start with this tip because you can really narrow your search down into those niche subjects that you want. So that is the first place that you can start filtering and refining books. The next place you can filter and refine is by this, you've guessed it, refine button here. So we're gonna tap refine and this will allow us to choose, you know, the format, a specific language, or availability. So maybe we're looking for something that's available now because we're busy, you know, so we're going to come into availability and choose available now. Now I'm using a demo library and only overdrive specialists who use the demo library um, are using this. So it only dropped by one book, but I promise if you choose availability, it will definitely lower your number of in your search at your library. And then the last thing I wanna show you in that refine menu here is that you can also sort by. So right now we're sorting by date added. That means when my library purchases a book and adds it to the collection, it shows up at the top of the list. But I always like to sort mine by release date just so I can see those newest titles up at the top of the list. And then as I work my way down the list, they get older and older. So that is refining here. But what I want to show you as well is the differences between preference and refine. So this is a question that we get a lot. It's why do you have two menus that are right next to each other that have the same categories? And this is because refining is temporary and for the search that you're making at that moment, while preferences are sticky and will stay filtering your lists until you change them again. So for example, refining for the moment in the search that we're making right now, an example of this would be if you're someone who likes to listen to audiobooks and likes to read ebooks, but you're about to hop in the car to go on a road trip, you're going to want to filter out the ebooks for the search that you're making. So you could come into Refine, change the format to audiobooks. And then the next time you're searching, Libby will revert back to showing you ebooks and audiobooks. But for this search that we're making right now, Libby is going to filter the ebooks out. Now, in a, the case of preferences, something that you might want to change and then have that stick for every search that you make is language. Perhaps you only speak English or only speak Spanish or any number of languages, you only speak one of those. You could come into language, I only speak English, I speak a pitiful amount of French that my French teacher would shake her head at. And so I only want to see those English titles so that I can only find books that I know I'm going to be able to read. And I know that preference stuck because it now is showing me that I have one preference attached to my searches. So this means I can close the app. I could not touch my iPad and open Libby for a month. And if I come back, that preference is still going to stay. And every search I make is only going to show me English titles. 
So that's the difference between preferences and refining. The very last part of searching and filtering those lists that I want to show you is how to jump into multiple pages. So if you're like me, you love three or four subjects and that's what you stick to. So you've probably scrolled through the same two pages, three pages of each subject. So I'm going to go down and scroll, scroll, scroll. And I'm gonna scroll until I see page two. And here we go. I see page two. And do we remember my tip about underlined words? That's a button. So anything in Libby that's underlined indicates it's a button. You can go ahead and tap that and jump into, page, into a different page. So maybe we've seen page one through four a million times. We can tap on page five and that will jump us to page five and we can skip over all of those books that we've seen time and time again. All right, so that was tip number one, searching for titles and then filtering and refining those lists to find the books that you like faster. Now we're gonna head into tip number two, tagging titles. And I'm actually gonna stay right here because you can see the option to tag is already on the screen. So what tagging does is it allows you to create your own lists. And if you were an OverDrive user and are now seeing if Libby is something that you wanna do, one thing I always like to tell people is that this is one of the main differences between OverDrive and Libby. So OverDrive allows you to use a wish list and it shows you your history. But Libby has a tagging system that is so robust. You can tag titles as virtually anything and you don't have to um, be limited to anything other than your imagination. So let's say you come across a book, we're in our advanced search right now, and the Book of Lost Things looks interesting, but it's not something I'm in the mood for right now. I want to tag it to save it to my wish list so I know that I can come back to it. So what I'm going to do is tap on tag. These first three tags come with Libby built in, so thumbs up and thumbs down are pretty self-explanatory. This stack of books can mean whatever you want it to mean. It could be your wish list. It can be what you use to mark titles as done. That's really up to you. Or you could create your own list. So these three lists here, I created myself and I did it by just tapping add. But let's say I want to add this to my wish list. I'll just tap on wish list. This next book here, let's say I want to mark it as red. So I'm going to tag the title. And this is actually my favorite part about tagging titles is that I like to tag them as red and then the year next to them. And the reason I like to do that is you can see tags show up right next to the jacket cover in your search. We're still in that advanced search. So the reason I love to mark my titles as red is because when I'm searching for a title, I like to see the year that I read it. So I know if it's time for me to revisit that book or just skip over it. So you can see red 2021. As I'm scrolling through that list, maybe red 2015 is something I'm willing to revisit. But if I read it as early as 2018, 2019, then I probably am not gonna read it again anytime soon. And I love this tip because I'm someone who will truly read the first 50 pages of the same book like seven times. <laughs> so I like to make sure that I'm not doing that and I'm marking those books as read. So this is how you can tag titles from a search, but you can also tag them from your shelf. And that's when this red, red with the year comes in handy. So I'm gonna come over to my shelf and let's say this title here, The Glass Hotel, let's pretend I'm about to finish it and return it. Before I return it, I wanna tag it as red 2021 so that the next time it comes up into a search, it shows up right next to that jacket cover. To tag from your shelf, you're gonna tap Manage Loan. And then from here, you're going to tap into this yellow box where it says the title name. 
And this is going to show you a menu where you have tag as your option at the bottom. So I'm gonna tap on tag and then scroll down in this list and tap on red 2021. And now I know if I come across the glass hotel in any of my searches, that tag will appear right next to that jacket cover. So that is how you tag titles. I wanna show you where those tags live. So if you go to your shelf tab and then scroll up to the top of your shelf, you'll see tags as that third option there. If you tap into that, that will show you your full list of all the tags that you have. Now, I only have two titles in my red 2021 tag, so I'm not gonna go into that list because I wanna show you what a full list will look like. So I'm gonna tap into my wish list here. And from here, you can see all the titles that I've added to my wish list. And from here, you can borrow them or place holds on them. So you'll see that A Promised Land by Barack Obama has a calendar icon right here with a little clock. This is indicating that it's a title that's currently on a, a wait list. So if you tap on that calendar icon, this is where you can join that wait list by tapping place hold. The titles that have, we call this a library gem, it will show the colors of your library. So mine are blue and blue, but yours might look a little bit different with different colors, but it'll always be a box with that plus sign there. And if you tap on that, that will give you the option to borrow the title. So I'm gonna sneak in one of those tips here, and that is how to export your tags. So if you wanna print out your tags, maybe you're gonna to go to Barnes and Noble later and you're, you wanna purchase a book from your wish list or you know whatever, you could come up to your tag. So we're still in that tag, that wish list tag, tap on actions and then export tag. And then you can choose if you wanna export this into a table or a spreadsheet. And that will basically show up and look like this, a full list here. And all you have to do is come up to the share button and that will allow you to share this to your email or your messages and then you could print out from there. All right. So that was tip number two with a sneaky extra tip there as well. We're gonna go to our last tip here. So our third and final tip was making notes and highlights in Libby. So I'm actually going to open a title here. Let me open this title and I'm gonna open in Libby. So notes and highlights are really great for anyone who's in book clubs, anyone who might have students that are remote learning right now or not remote, blah, 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 blah. not remote learning. Um, I um, would have loved to have this feature when I was in high school. And then Joe and I are just types of people who like to make notes and highlights in our books, regardless of not, you know, if, if it's not something we're reading for our book club. So maybe you're that way too. So what you're going to do to make a note is let's say we wanna highlight this full paragraph here. I'm gonna start at the very beginning and tap and hold my finger on the screen. And I did it right above, there we go. And I'm still holding my finger on the screen. We can see that it's starting to highlight in blue. And I'm just gonna keep dragging my finger down until that full passage is highlighted. Whoops, got a little heavy there. And then as soon as I lift my finger off the screen, you can see that the menu down at the bottom is showing highlight. So we can just choose highlight. You can even choose a different color if you wanna keep organized here. I'm just gonna select highlight. That will default to yellow. Once I tap highlight, you can see that that color changed from blue to yellow. And to add a note, all we have to do is tap on that highlight and another menu will drop down. So I'm going to say this is an example of a note. I've typed full paragraphs here. So you're not limited to just one sentence. You can type, you know, all your thoughts that you want to get out in book club and then go ahead and tap on save. And then I'm just going to move forward 
throughout the book so that you can see how to pop back to that highlight. So if you ever want to see those highlights while you're still in your title, just tap in the center of the screen. Those highlights will appear. You'll see I have a little yellow marker here letting me know I have a highlight there. And I could click on this, but I'm going to actually go up here because it's a little more precise. So I'm going to go up to that multiple bookmark icon and tap on that. And my bookmark and highlights will appear here. So I can even see this is an example of a note. And then it shows me a tiny portion of what I highlighted. But if you tap on this, it will drag you all the way back to that highlight so you can see that full passage that you highlighted. And if you tap on that highlight, it will drop down that menu again to show you what note you made. Now, you can access your notes and highlights inside the book this way, or you can also access them outside of an ebook, um, whether that book has been returned to the library or not. So a lot of people will borrow a book for book club, read it and make all their annotations. And then by the time book club comes around, someone else is reading that book and they don't have access to borrow it again, but they need not worry. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on done and we're gonna leave this title. So I always tell people tap in the center of the screen to make those menus appear. With the caveat of if a highlight is in the middle of the screen, tap above or below it. Because if you tap that highlight, it's just gonna bring up that highlight menu. So I'm tapping right below, it brings those menus back up and I'm gonna hit back. And I'm gonna scroll down to my recent returns because these are all the titles that I've returned back to the library. They're no longer on my shelf, but you can find this uh, what I'm going to show you, whether you search for the book on the library tab or you access it from your recent returns on your shelf. The only thing you need to know is you're looking for your library or your title detail page. So for the guest list here to view the title detail page, I just need to tap on the jacket cover. Again, I could have searched for the guest list and found the titles details page that way. This was just an easier way to do it for me. And when you're in your titles details page, you're looking for your reading journey. Now your reading journey starts as soon as you borrow a title, you, that reading journey will appear. And then that reading journey captures anything that you do with that book after you borrow it for the first time. So I'm gonna tap into reading journey here. And you can see I've all the times I've borrowed this title, all of the highlights that I've made. And to view those highlights, you just have to tap on them. So if I tap on this highlight here, this will show you the full text that you highlighted. So even though that last highlight that I made was a big paragraph, it will still show the full thing. And then my example of my note is here as well. So really nice for anyone who might want to access their notes and highlights after that title has been returned. And then sneaky tip here, I know I'm going over time, but we'll stay for questions. Sneaky tip here, if you come up to actions, just like in that tags uh, menu, you tap on actions, you can export your reading data, and that will allow you to export your notes and highlights for printing as well. And that wraps up tip number three and all of our tips and tricks today. And we're opening up the floor now for any questions that you might have. So get those ready and we can cover anything that you'd like. You can even ask questions anonymously. So if you wanna ask anonymously, you can go ahead and do that. And Joe and I can demo things for you or answer any questions that you might have. We did have a few questions. We had a great question come in about language. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> now it's been too long since I've talked. <laughs> the first one I wanted to mention with language is um, the number of languages available is just kind of based off of how the publisher publishes books. So if they put titles out in many languages, um, your library can add those titles into the collection uh, based on probably the language that is most available in the area. So since this is our demo library, you're seeing a lot of the languages you that, that we offer. Um, but in most situations, if your community has 
a large German population or Spanish or Russian or French, um, it's likely that your library adds titles that matches those. So that's one side of language. But I also wanted to point out the Libby app um, is available in about nine different languages currently, and we're always expanding. So the app itself can change its appearance to be in a different language. This does happen uh, by default from your system settings. So if your phone is, say, your, uh, your first language is French and um, your phone is set to display in French or your iPad, whatever you're reading on, um, the Libby app will default to that language. Um, so just know that if English isn't your first language and you'd prefer to see, or if you're functioning with your device in a different language, the Libby app will accommodate that. As I mentioned, nine languages um, currently, and we're always expanding. I know we are at time, but as Marissa mentioned, we are more than happy to stick around for any questions you may have. Um, Marissa and I will stay on the line until all questions are answered. But if you are done with us for today, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you can tap leave in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. A survey will pop up if you can take a few moments just to let us know what you thought, how we can improve, uh, what you enjoyed. We appreciate that. Uh -huh. So thank I you all for someone. Sorry, Joe. I did have yeah. someone ask about um, when your loan ends, does the book automatically return or do you get a notification that it needs to be returned? And I just wanted to show those notifications and how to manage those. So if you come up to the Libby menu and tap on that, then if you have pre-existing notifications right here, you're just going to swipe these to the left. That will make those disappear. And that's when you'll see the manage notification button. And from managing no your notifications, what you're looking for is loan expiring. And if you set this to either be the blue notification line or the menu badge, then you will be alerted when that book is going to be due. The other thing too, is if you come over to your shelf, Libby is really great about any important information showing up in a different color in bold right above the title. So this is just showing me that I have a title ready to borrow, but if a book is about to return to the library, then it will say your book is due soon in bright colors and you'll that is your first indication of, oh, my book is due soon, I need to borrow it. And if you or re, renew it, sorry. And if you do need to renew your loan, here's this is sorry a title that's on hold. It just had an example of what the bright colors what worded looks what it, what it will look like. So many talkings. <laughs> so here we go. So if you tap on manage loan before a book is due, um, that's when you'll get the option to renew the loan. And like I told Richard. If there is a wait list um, for the title, then that is going to allow you to um, join the wait list. So you'll have to wait in line again. It will go back into the wait list to the next person. And then once it's your turn on the wait list again, it'll come back to you. If there isn't anyone in line behind you, then you, you will be able to renew your loan for a full loan period. And you can notice, you might notice that my um, renew loan button is grayed out. And that's because it doesn't allow you to renew a title until 72 hours before it returns on its due date. So I have this book, let's see, for 20 more days. So on day 17 is when that button will allow me to tap that. And it's pretty specific to 72 hour period. So if it's day 17, but like one more hour to go before it's, you know, 11, 13 AM, then it, it will not um, allow me to renew that title until I hit 11, 13 AM on the 72 hours before it's due. So just keep that in mind as well. Uh, that is a great point. Notifications are super handy. Um, while our titles do automatically expire, so you never have to worry about fines or late fees, it is great to set up that alert if you know that you don't always, uh, like if you're like me, I tend to get distracted some way through a book if it wasn't the most intriguing, but I still want to finish it. So day 22 hit or day 19 hits and I go, uh oh, I need to renew this. I'm glad I have that notification. Um, because I may not be done. 
All right. Well, it looks like we don't have any other questions coming in. So Marissa and I are going to take one more moment uh, to see if anything else comes through. But other than that, thank you all so much for joining us today. We appreciate your time and we appreciate your interest um, and happy reading.